Hey, this is Kyle from EssentialDeveloper.com and today we're starting a new series called Composing View Controllers. And for this first part, let's have a look at Storyboard's composition. Okay, so the goal for this video is to show how to compose view controllers by separating the layout. Let's start with a problem. Imagine you have a game, there is a single player, and during the gameplay you show the score for the game and the player name. And there it is. You can show the player name, the score, and when you play the game, those things can update. Great. Now your boss asks you to implement multiplayer. So you finish the implementation and now you need a different user interface. But you still want to have the single player mode. So we can create a different view controller. So now you have two different view controllers. This view should be pretty much the same, but we had to duplicate the layout. And there might be a problem. Because now, every time you need to change something here, then it's to reflect on this view. You need to change in two places. And probably the implementation of this view controller then is to set those values are going to be re-implemented here, which means copy and paste. That's not really reusable. So let's see how this would look like. Now if we have a multiplayer view controller, We'll probably have something like this. Okay, so this is starting to look weird now. So at this point, we should probably create a player view. So if we create a class, let's call it player view, then we can combine these two properties here. Now we could have player one and player two, and we can move the setters to the view as well. Now we fixed the visibility in code, but what about the layout? Well, we could use nibs or we could do the layout in code, but if you want to have the layout in storyboards and reuse it, there is a different approach we can take here. So let's try to compose these different layouts in the storyboards and have in code just logic for the views. The first thing I'm going to do is to create a new storyboard. Now I can copy this view controller and paste it here. And this is going to be my reusable view controller layout for player one. To improve the visibility, I can change the simulated size to freeform. And let's give it 65 height. And let's have a look at the constraints now. Now, since this view represents just a portion of the screen, I want to take all the space I can. So I'm going to remove the margins. And now I have to set it up as the initial view controller. Now I can create a second storyboard for the player two layout. Let's call it player two. Great. Now I can copy this view controller. And let's change the layout. Great. Now we can create a shared class. Let's call it player score view controller. Now we can flatten as we had before. There it is. The code is the same for both storyboards, but they have different layouts. Now, how can I compose them? Well, let's create a new storyboard. This time, let's call it single player game. Let's add a view controller. Let's make this the initial view controller for the storyboard. Well, let's add a storyboard reference in a container view. We can remove this view controller. And if you control drag to the storyboard reference, you can select embed and the view defined in the storyboard reference is going to be embedded inside this container. So we can select player one storyboard. We can find the constraints for this view. Now in my main storyboard, I can remove this view. Let's add a type bar, just so we can see it on the screen. Again, I add a storyboard reference. This time I'm going to link it 
with a single player game and I can link my tab bar by adding it as a view controller. Which looks like we forgot to set the initial view controller here and here. And here it is, the single player and the multiplayer, but the multiplayer is still using the old layout without composition. Let's go back to it. I'm going to remove the multiplayer and I'm going to add a new storyboard. Let's call it multiplayer game. Set a view controller. Let's make it the initial view controller before we forget. Let's add two containers. I'm going to remove the default view controllers. I'm going to set up my constraints. Let's now add two references. One for the player one, or the one for the player two. Let's embed them in the containers. Let's add the class multiplayer view controller. So the player view goes away and my multiplayer view controller now still have two players but they are player score view controllers just like here let's call this just player and set the class for our view controller great now in the main storyboard i'm going to add another reference and this time it's going to point to the multiplayer game and if I did this correctly, when I run the app, I should see both the single player and the multiplayer with the composed view controllers. I cannot see the items, but they are here. Okay, let's fix this. We need to add a bar item for view controller. Let's call it multiplayer. And single player. And now I can see the titles. Okay, so this is looking better now. I am reusing the player view controller in three places with different layout in all of them. So now if your boss comes and say, well, we want to add a new game type and it's a timed multiplayer game. So we're gonna have the same view, but we have a time bar. Okay, I think we can do it. Let's do the same thing again. Layout in the storyboard. Let's call it timed multiplayer game. Now it's very similar to the multiplayer game, so I can pretty much copy this and paste it here. But now the problem is if somehow we change the appearance and the constraints here, now we have two places to change, here and here. So before we carry on with the timed multiplayer, I would like to compose the multiplayer game. And how can we do this? Well, let's create a new storyboard. And I'm gonna call it multiplayer score great now i can copy this again this time i don't need this and again this should take the entire space okay so if i go back to my multiplayer game instead of having two views now i can have just one trailing space and the reference now goes to the multiplayer score. Great. And I forgot the initial view controller again. Okay, it still works. But now I have this reusable component that I'm going to use for the timed game. I can pretty much copy this to the timed game. Let's create a new storyboard for the time bar. Let's call it time bar. Now in the timed multiplayer game, we can add finally a container view for the time bar.
now in the main storyboard. Let's create another reference to the time multiplayer game. Let's add it to the tab bar. If I did everything correctly, this should work. And it does. Great. So now, if you want to change anything here, let's say the multiplayer score shared view, we can add a label in between these two. Now both of them got it at the same time. Great. That's exactly what I wanted. Now let's have a look at our view controllers. The player score only cares about a name and a score. It doesn't know about player 1 or player 2. That's not the responsibility of this view controller. And we don't need to use any inheritance here. We are composing view controllers together. If we look at the multiplayer view controller, it composes two player score view controllers. And the single player view controller have only one. And that's great. Now we can create a, another class for the timed multiplayer view controller. So the time multiplayer view controller composes a player 1, player 2 and a time bar. We can go one step further and compose these two in another class. Okay, we didn't have to do that, but that looks nice. Now let's set up the correct classes. Now we have a problem. In storyboards, we cannot link the view controller with an outlet, but we could do something different. By using the container views, what happens is, as soon as the view did load this code in this view controller, it's going to load all the dependencies and add the contained view controllers as child view controllers. So what we can do is, we can have a computed var that we can use to return to our view controllers. We can flat map to cast the view controllers as a player score view controller and get the first one flat map great let's see if that works i have to force the view to load just to test now i can use single dot player dot name equals test great let's see great it updated the name awesome so this approach works in the multiplayer score, we have two of them. Okay, let's test this. Great. So the single player is updating the name and the multiplayer is updating. Ah, it's not. Let's have a look at the code. Yeah, this should be last. And you can already can see how fragile that is. But there's a better way. Great, that works. But what about the order of those things? Hmm, yeah, the order matters here. So there's something else we can do here. When we create storyboard references for the container views, every time they're going to be created, there is a method invoked. And the method is prepare for segue. So what we can do now is to have those properties. And now we have to set the identifiers in the storyboard. So we select the arrow that connects them and we can set a storyboard identifier for the segue. Player 1 and player 2. Great. Let's run this again. And it works again. So let me fix the other ones. Just make sure that works. And it doesn't work. Of course, I inverted the types. See, 
We need unit tests. We need unit tests. Great, that's enough. But we are comparing strings. Oh, storyboards. Okay. Well, we could probably use some frameworks that help us create constants for all the identifiers in the storyboards. They help us with some type safeties. But for me, the best thing we can do here is actually to have unit tests. Yeah, you can have the compiler checking for you the, the types, but I wouldn't feel very confident still. You can see how a simple example is already getting out of hand. We could probably have a bang here and have the app crashing, but as you add more and more screens to your app, it just gets out of hand. So in the next video, we're gonna see how we can have unit tests to guarantee your composition is working as we want and we can have an automated way of checking this. And it's gonna be super quick. So I hope this video helps you understand a little bit more about how to compose view controllers, how to deal with layout. So here you can see that there is no layout code in the view controllers and there is composition. So we also saw the approach with prepare for segues, or we can also have computed vars. I really hope this helps you. So there it is. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. Next time we're going to be looking at testing strategies, limitations with storyboards and how to bypass them. So subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Thank you.